I can't think of a better thing to do with my free time at the moment than build an A2 style rifle. This is a group effort between my son and myself. Also, it's worth mentioning that neither of us have built an AR from scratch before, although we are very familiar with the AR-15 platform itself. So this should be a lot of fun and indeed a learning process. In no particular order, here is the list of parts. The barrel is made by Rock River Arms, a heavy profile chromoly barrel chambered in 223 Wild with a 1 and 9 twist. A BCM bolt carrier group. This A2 fixed carry handle upper receiver is also from Rock River Arms. A Ruger AR556 lower receiver and a standard mil spec lower parts kit from CMMG. The rest of the parts to complete the upper are also from Rock River Arms. A UTG A2 buttstock and a couple 20 round mags made by C Products. Fast forward a few days and now the rifle is complete. A thing of beauty if you ask me and it is quite the attention grabber at the range. At this snapshot in time, most of the ARs that I see at the range are tactically upgraded or personalized to the owner's druthers, which is fantastic in itself, although my point is this A2 breathes some fresh retro air into a saturated bolt-on accessory environment. And yes, this is a joy to shoot. The 20 inch barrel with a rifle length gas system is such a perfect combination with low recoil, low perceived muzzle blast, and a long sight pitcher. It is quite easy to find patience with this rifle. Up front we have a standard A2 flash hider, a F marked A2 front sight gas block with a matched sight, a bayonet lug, and a standard sling swivel. Moving on, you can see the profile of this heavy barrel chambered in 223 Wild, along with the heat shields for the handguards. Rock River Arms also has a manufacture date on the barrel itself. Then we have some very common mil spec parts, including a tapered delta ring, dust cover, shell deflector, forward assist, bolt catch, non ambi safety, A2 grip, magazine release, and a flat trigger guard. The trigger itself is a mil-spec heavy clean brake trigger with a very obvious tactile and audible reset. The bolt is made by Bravo Company Manufacturing with a properly staked gas key, mil-spec Carpenter 158 steel that has been shot peened. Also, it has been high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected. Your run of the mill aluminum charging handle, a dual aperture A2 rear sight with an adjustable elevation out to 800 meters, A2 buttstock with a storage compartment, a couple 20 round mags that somewhat looked apart. Lastly, a green cotton web sling that I borrowed from another rifle out of the safe. There is a reason I am not shown any of the build process itself. It is because I am not supposed to do such a thing under YouTube policies at the moment. Although there are videos out there if you look for them. As I have said before that this is, or now was, the first build that my son and I put together, I have a tip from a couple of noobs. Buy the correct tool to install the rivet that secures the front sling swivel. Be it a rivet punch like this, or there is a press that you can pick up as well. I can't tell you how many videos I have seen that are how-to videos of installing the rivet and they beat the tar out of the rivet with the wrong tool and split the rivet and bang up the sight base. Additionally, I watched almost every video out there on building these things and some people simply beat up the rifle as a whole with a disclaimer that it is a tool so the dents don't matter. I very much disagree. Wear comes with time and use. Scratches have memories, dents have stories, things break because things break. But there's no reason to pre-damage your tool. I call it lazy, I call it impatient, I call a foul. Put it together with pride, not excuses. I digress. I knew this rifle would be a bit heavy, especially with a heavy barrel. Add a loaded 20 round magazine and it almost weighs 10 pounds. With that being said, my goal from inception is just to be a bench rifle, a plinker, a target rifle. Not a defensive tool necessarily, at least not for me. I prefer under a 7 pound carbine for such a thing. 
Some people will look at this and see a M16 or an A2 or something else they recognize from a movie. Some people will see a carry handle AR-15. Some will see a scary black gun. You will see what you know. My point here is that I am not building this as a clone rifle to be period correct by any means. I did my best to get parts that I believe to be A2 parts and parts that are actually available at this time. It is very possible I am way off as far as a purist is concerned and it is possible I am on the right track and it is deserving of being called an A2 clone. It is just what it is and if you were wondering what I call it, I call it the A2. I spent a couple dedicated days at the range firing groups with six different types of ammunition with some impressive results. Overall, I can pull off a fairly consistent 2-inch group at 100 yards, which for me is absolutely outstanding with iron sights and a non-free-floated AR. Although I have pulled off a 1.5 MOA at 50 yards and a 1.4 MOA at 200. Here is an example of a 1 and 3 quarter inch 5-shot group at 100 yards. This was shot with M193 full metal jacket bow tail 55 grain, which this rifle does like. I think it is easy to say that this rifle can shoot better than this shooter. I need some more time behind this rifle and I need more ammo if I was to be honest. In this climate, I am preaching to the choir stating I'm having trouble finding ammo. In regards to reliability, I have fired over 300 rounds with boring reliability, no failures of any kind to report. 